David Dobrik's ascent from Vine to YouTube fame reshaped not just his own path, but also those around him, like Jason Nash. <laughs> this video delves into the impact of Dobrik's career and teases the story of another YouTuber following a similarly controversial trajectory, highlighting the intertwined fates within the influencer ecosystem. David's short comedic clips earned him a loyal following on Vine. People are always like, David, why do you have so many fans? Well, it's because I'm hot. But honestly, who needs fans? Screw you, fan. However, it was his leap to YouTube in 2015 that truly launched his career into the stratosphere. His vlogs, a concoction of humor, real-life adventures, and orchestrated pranks, became a recipe for success, enchanting millions worldwide. Alongside him, his group of friends, known affectionately as the Vlog Squad, became the heart of his content, weaving a tapestry of camaraderie that viewers couldn't get enough of. Never had a gay experience. Like he's getting all red because I'm so close to him because he's horny. <laughs> At the height of his career, Dobrik's influence was undeniable, boasting over 18 million YouTube subscribers and a treasure trove of views. He was a king in the realm of social media. His empire expanded beyond the screens, venturing into voice acting, hosting TV shows, and launching innovative apps. His golden touch seemed to turn every venture into success, made him a figure many aspired to emulate. However, as the saying goes, when the tide goes out, you discover who's been swimming naked. The turning point in Dobrik's seemingly unblemished narrative began with serious allegations against a member of the vlog squad known as Dirty Dom. I started making a movie about David, who was, you know, one of my dearest friends, um, about just his rise, which was unlike anything I'd ever experienced. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, this article came out about some like really terrible things that happened on the set of one of his videos, things that he didn't do, but one of his co-stars did, one of the guys, Dirty Dom, real scumbag, was in his videos. Um, you know, he assaulted this young girl in one of his videos, and this story came out and just really torpedoed his career. Uh, necessarily, this is a horrible thing that happened, and it shined light on really the negative sides of, of what his career had been up until then. And I was there, and I didn't know that that was coming, so I captured all of that. And it was really seeing like the collapse of a career in real time. This dark chapter cast a long shadow over Dobrik's empire, raising questions about the environment cultivated within his circle and the extent of his responsibility for the actions that occurred under the guise of content creation. The waters muddied further with the harrowing tale of Jeff Wittick's accident. In a stunt orchestrated for the vlog, Wittick swung from an excavator controlled by Dobrik, leading to a catastrophic accident that left him with grave injuries. The aftermath of the accident was fraught with tension and concern, yet Dobrik's immediate priority seemingly lay in securing Wittick's approval to publicize the footage. I can't believe you fucking came in here with the joke and make up that. You sick fuck! <laughs> you never find jokes any more soothing or calming or funnier when you're with somebody that's really hurt and they're cracking jokes. It's like the best feeling because you're like, oh my god, thank the Lord, and he's still like being himself. The request, coming at a time when Wittek faced a long road to recovery, painted a stark picture of Dobrik's priorities, placing content creation above the well-being of his friends. In the wake of the controversies that rocked his digital empire, David Dobrik's response was initially perceived as a ship trying to sail without a compass. At the onset of the allegations against Dirty Dom and the fallout from Jeff Wittick's accident, Dobrik chose to navigate through the tempest with no word. His first attempts to address the swirling accusations seemed to lack depth and genuine accountability. Another YouTuber that is going down a similar path as David Dobrik did is Eric. Eric Decker's ascent on YouTube was meteoric, a testament to his knack for crafting content that pushed boundaries and engaged viewers in ways few others could. From his early experiments with viral challenges to ambitious projects like attempting to gain a million subscribers in a year, Eric's career was a roller coaster of high stakes endeavors that captured the imagination of a rapidly growing audience. One of Eric's most notable early projects was his quest to sneak into high profile events. Consequently, to this video's topic, Eric has made his fair share of content, milking David's success with examples like How I Stole David Dobrik's Girlfriend and Surprising David Dobrik with 100 David Dobrik's. However, 
It was not just the thrill of the chase that endeared Airac to his fans. You're looking at what will be the world's largest pizza. Or the world's largest failure. <laughs> Me. Now, if you've been with me for the past year, then you know that on my eighth birthday, I threw a pizza party for all my friends and not one person showed up. But last year, I promised you guys that if we hit 10 million subscribers before the end of the year, that I would throw a new pizza party with you guys, my new friends. And you guys came through, shooting the channel to 11 million subscribers. And now we finally have a shot at bringing this project to life. The world's largest pizza. Yet, as Airac's star ascended, so too did the scrutiny on his methods and the authenticity of his content. Controversy soon clouded the horizon with allegations that threatened to undermine the very foundation of his YouTube empire. Critics and fellow content creators began to question the veracity of his charitable acts and the ethics behind some of his most viral moments. I'm pretty sure that Mr. Beast is allowed to delete your channel now? For 10 minutes straight, I showed irrefutable evidence and undeniable proof of how this huge 15 million subscriber YouTuber successfully lied to his viewers for 30 days straight to get that sweet increased December ad revenue and increase his merch sales. You can count on me to not fake videos, unlike almost every other creator on the platform. I feel like I just started 100 beefs. Not sorry about it. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you, but I found irrefutable evidence that not only has he been faking the biggest challenges for the past few years that made him popular in the first place. No, he also doxed someone and lied about giving away money during COVID. These revelations were not just blemishes on Air Rack's record. They were seismic events that called into question the integrity of his entire body of work. The current controversy swirling around Airac is multifaceted, touching on several critical issues within the content creation community. Allegations of doxing, a grave breach of privacy where personal information is published without consent have emerged, painting a disturbing picture of negligence and moral oversight. Furthermore, the authenticity of Airac's charitable donations has been called into question with people accusing him of using the guise of philanthropy for personal gain. This controversy is not just about whether a video is real or fake, it's about the implications of a creator's actions on their audience and the broader digital ecosystem. As Airac confronts these allegations, the response from both the creator and the community has been mixed. Some fans remain loyal, citing the entertainment value of his content as justification for his methods. Others, however, see this as a critical moment for introspection and accountability within the YouTube sphere. For now, Airac has been following David Dobrik's footsteps in terms of responding to the controversy. His public statements, apologies, and any changes to his content will be pivotal in determining his path forward. Will he adapt a more transparent approach, or will he double down on the strategies that brought him to prominence? The saga of Airac serves as a contemporary reflection of the David Dobrik paradox, illustrating the perilous tightrope creators walk between innovation and integrity. This paradox encapsulates the struggle to maintain ethical standards in a landscape that often rewards sensationalism over substance. The unfolding narrative of Airac's career and the controversies that accompany it underscore a critical juncture in the evolution of digital entertainment. It serves as a reminder that in the quest for views, virality, and influence, creators must not lose sight of the impact their content has on their audience, friends, and colleagues. Take Jason Nash, for example, whose career trajectory took a notable turn from his days as a key player in David Dobrik's vlogs to his current endeavors on TikTok. I love this shit. I love to talk to all types of people and, um... Once celebrated for his comedic contributions to the vlog squad, Nash now finds himself in a vastly different position, engaging in TikTok live streams where he appeals for financial support from viewers. This shift underscores the volatile nature of digital fame and raises questions about the sustainability of content-driven careers, especially when they are so deeply intertwined with larger, more influential figures. Nash's journey from mainstream success to seeking support on live streams, 
highlights the precarious balance creators must maintain between relevance and resilience. And sometimes the fight for attention leads to controversy that shines negative light on creators' career. And that's the David Dobrik paradox.